What is going on, everybody? Welcome to the Week 12 NFL Power Rankings. It was a big week. We've got a lot of movement to react to, so it should be a good one. I want to give a quick reminder to please hit that like button down below if you enjoy the Power Rankings. Also, make sure you subscribe, turn on notifications so you don't miss an upload. Also, consider using promo code FRANCHISEGUY, an easy way to support the channel. Save $20 on your next purchase of some ticks. So do check that out. You're going to get the best prices anyway. Also, one last thing. Check out the Fully Inflated Football Podcast. Uploaded one last night was my longest episode yet. I think it was a good one. I think you guys will enjoy it if you haven't checked out the podcast yet. So head over to your podcast services and search up the Fully Inflated Football Podcast. All right, let's get into the rankings now. Starting at number 32, we got a new team this week. It is the Washington Deadskins. I know the Bengals are winless, but just by the eye test, this team just doesn't have the talent. Dwayne Haskins, I'm not going to give up on him. I did like him coming out, but right now just can't really make the pro reads. Just kind of doesn't have it right now. Doesn't really look ready, honestly. So the Redskins, to me, are the worst team in the NFL. And then as for the Bengals, who are going to come in here at number 31, you know, they, they tried, and I still don't fully understand how they don't have a win yet. They do have talent, to, uh, talent across the board here. You got a good D line. Uh, Joe Mixon is incredible. Like, I'm not saying this is any crazy good team, but the fact that they haven't won a game yet does surprise me. Number 30, the New York Giants. They are going to stay put. They were on bye this week. Good offense, quite possibly the worst defense in the entire NFL. Number 29, the Miami Dolphins. They are going to drop down a spot. More about other teams across the league. They really were the Miami Dolphins this week, kind of uninspiring against the Buffalo Bills. They tried to keep it close. It took some big plays to do so. For the most part, this is not a good football team. Uh, they are finding some studs down there, though. Nick Needham, undrafted corner, really breaking out there. So at least they're finding uh, some diamonds in the rough here, getting the opportunity to play some of these guys. Uh, number 28, the New York Jets. They are definitely heating up a little bit, granted, against two of these bottom five teams. Um, but at the end of the day, Sam Darnold is playing significantly better. When your quarterback is playing better, everything just kind of falls into place a little more. The defense is actually where I'm more optimistic as far as Sam Darnold is concerned. At this point, we got to just kind of take it week by week. Until he can string together four or five weeks of looking like he did against this Redskins team, or even 80% of that would do because he was incredible. You know, it's just hard to say if he's going to be Jameis Winston or if he can take that next step and be a, a legitimate franchise for this team where he can give them more consistent play on a week-to-week -week basis. So only time's going to tell. I'm at the point, even though I love Sam Darnold, I'm not going to take a stance at this point because his highs are as high as anyone we've seen. He's had three amazing games this year, but he's also had two or three of the worst performances as well. Uh, so then we have a tier gap jump up here into our next tier, and this is the Any Given Sunday tier. We had this same tier last week. It's our biggest chunk of teams in this list. And these are basically teams that, uh, as was kind of proved this week, honestly, teams that can beat anyone that aren't any sort of serious Super Bowl contender, probably not even playoff teams here, um, but teams that you can't necessarily sleep on. So number 27, the Denver Broncos. The Vikings learned everything we just said firsthand this week. They, quite frankly, should have lost to the Broncos. This team, even if they had Joe Flacco in there, probably would not have blown that game. But... Uh, on the road, Allen just, you know, Brandon Allen, you got to clarify because there's three Allens starting in the NFL right now. Uh, they just couldn't move the ball in the second half, and the defense got tired, and a much better team uh, with this Broncos team on the road, they just couldn't keep up. So obviously some problems here in Denver, but I do think they're a cut above those last five teams we went through. The Bucks yet again this week, you know, some explosive plays, bad defense, Jameis just kind of slinging around. This is the most predictably unpredictable team next to the Tennessee Titans in the league, uh, but they're kind of polar opposites. The Bucks are very volatile, whereas the Titans are just kind of steam lined down the middle. Anyway, next up, we've got the Jacksonville Jaguars. They are going to drop down. It's actually two spots. I'm sorry the graphic says one. I make these graphics at two in the morning, so a typo here or there. I think you guys can forgive me. Anyway, you know, it wasn't a necessarily, you know, unimpressive loss or whatever. Like, they went in and just kind of got 
beat up by a much better Colts team. Uh, at the end of the day, there's teams that are just passing them up here. This defense doesn't really even have any of that luster from the elite 2017 unit. Too many of the elite players are just gone at this point. Jalen Ramsey, Telvin Smith, notably. Uh, you know, the defense is just kind of eh. And then the offense is Nick Foles trying to do what he can. Foles actually didn't look terrible this week. Uh, but this team is is starting to creep down towards the bottom of the league. Then we got the Detroit Lions, minus three. A little tough because Stafford is kind of on this weird injury situation. It's starting to feel more and more like they're just going to shut him down. It's a weird back injury. Um, the offense actually moved the ball this week with Jeff Driscoll. This is arguably a top three receiving core in the league. You definitely got to be concerned that Patricia hasn't been able to get this defense to settle in like at all. They seem to be pretty consistently giving up big uh, chunks of plays, uh, uh, points every week. Uh, so they're going to come down here. And then the Arizona Cardinals, actually kind of similar to this Lions team. Ironically, they tied in the first game of the year. Uh, but this offense is overwhelmingly impressive with Cliff Kingsbury, Kyler Murray exceeding expectations here. You know, coming in, into the year, we basically knew that they weren't going to be able to compete in the NFC. If they were in the AFC, it might be a different story, by the way. Um, but just to see Kyler play at the level he's playing at, I, I would not shy away from saying he's a top 10 quarterback in the NFL this year. He just has everything you look for. He's basically like tiny Aaron Rodgers as a rookie. Like, to be completely honest, he, he he's made some mistakes. He's got to weed some of those out. Um, but the guy, to me, I'm willing to say has a extremely bright future. You hate to overreact to any rookie, but I really see it all with him. It was in his college tape as well. I'm not going to shy away from saying he's going to be an elite quarterback before too long. Number 22, the Cleveland Browns. I get it. They won. It was a big win for them, but they also lost their best player for the season this week. So that is going to have to come into play here if Miles Garrett didn't rip off his helmet and almost kill Mason Rudolph on the football field. Uh, I do think that suspension is completely warranted. I actually argued that perhaps the police should have got involved. That was just an unacceptable act by Miles Garrett. Uh, if the NFL decides that he's never allowed to play in the NFL again, I would stand behind that. I'm not saying that's right or wrong. Um, but the fact of the matter is, this team could have come off a huge primetime win with a 10-day uh, preparation for their next game uh, with a lot of momentum and an opportunity to make some noise in the AFC. Uh, but without Miles Garrett, that defense is going to take a step back. He opens up everything for that defense. And this offense, just even this week against the Steelers, it's just not on a level that can carry this team right now. So, yes, big win, but that act at the end of the game is really going to tamper a lot of optimism coming off of that win. Uh, so then the Steelers are going to still be ahead of the Browns. They are going to come down two spots. Mason Rudolph is an issue right now, but I do trust this defense. Uh, just if they could move the ball, if Mason Rudolph wasn't quite honestly the worst starting quarterback of any team on this list right now, which I think I believe, then this team would be in much better shape. But the defense just can't do it all. Uh, in the number 20, the Tennessee Titans are locked in here until uh, future notice. We're tired of this team floating between 16 and 24 for the last three years. Uh, so we're just going to lock them in here at number 20. They were on bye this week. Then we got the Carolina Panthers. They're going to be the biggest faller this week, going down five spots. Uh, some people believe in momentum in the NFL. Some people don't. I tend to believe in it a good bit. Uh, there was a reason I picked the Falcons. You know, you look back about a week ago, it's announced that Cam Newton will not be returning this year. That alone is a little demoralizing. Then they go into Green Bay and basically find out that they're not going to make the playoffs this year because they lost. Uh, they come home, and an Atlanta team that's playing for with something to prove, they just they just got whooped at the end of the day. That's, that's what happened, and I think this team is losing energy. They are now a kind of dead team without much of a pass rush with an okay secondary with a backup quarterback in there uh, and an offensive line that's playing really poorly the last two weeks so this team's fallen pretty quickly here uh, number 18 is going to be the Atlanta Falcons moving up seven spots so they're the biggest riser this week you know they yeah they only have three wins but their last two wins are very impressive this offense as we head into week 12 is a top five offense and, and the defense has been playing at an elite level the last two weeks as well. It just goes to show you that defense in this league can come alive at any moment. Adrian Claiborne 
is playing like Khalil Mack these last two weeks out of nowhere. Does that continue? No, probably not. Uh, but this Falcons team is definitely legit. I feel bad for anyone that has to play this Falcons team here in the last third of the year as opposed to anyone that got to play them earlier this season. Uh, number 17, the Chicago Bears. You know, this defense is still really good. Uh, they're going to move up because the Panthers are falling below them. Obviously, this team's season is done. They're probably going to move on from Mitchell Trubisky and kind of look for a, a not a, a rebuild this offseason, more of a transition. Do we see Andy Dalton? Do we see Cam Newton? It's going to be interesting. Uh, but this team's still competitive. I expect that they're going to come out and kind of whoop up on the Giants at home this week. So uh, they're going to hang out around here. And then the Chargers, they can't close games. Phillip Rivers has thrown all these picks. Uh, but they show good flashes as well. I, I think 16 is about right. They can really beat anyone any given Sunday, even if there's a 1-5 in five chance that they do it because they just can't really play consistent football for four quarters. Uh, but the highs are there. Uh, they really hung in there with the Chiefs uh, throughout the entire game, and they have the star, tower, uh, star power, and I would think Derwin's coming back here, so... Uh, you know, they're going to hang around here. And then we definitely have a clear cut tier gap here to our next team here. And uh, the biggest reason there is this tier gap is, is playoff relevancy. So the Oakland Raiders competing with uh, these next three teams are really fighting for this last AFC wildcard spot, um, or really the last two at this point. But the Oakland Raiders, yeah, they got a win this week against the number 31 team. It wasn't convincing. You know, most of the metrics and numbers and analytics that you look at, this team just, they're they are good, they're solid, they can move the ball on offense, but this defense is not very good. Uh, they still don't have much of a pass rush. I don't trust the secondary. Their linebackers stink. So, uh, man, I, I'm not going to walk away overly impressed by them barely scraping out against the Bengals, against Ryan Finley. And then we got the Colts moving up three spots. They really impressed me this week. It was Jacoby Brissett coming back. You can tell that, you know, there's a huge gap between him and Brian Hoyer. But also just, they brought it this week. The offensive line was whooping dudes. The defense, they played 22 different players. They're three deep at linebacker. They're secondary. They've got some young guys. Marvell Tell, as well as early second round pick. Rocky Sin have kind of made the secondary come alive. Justin Houston under the radar playing like a true number one edge rusher. So this defense is getting up into that upper echelon, a team that I can, you know, start to more see this defense carrying this team. And the offense, it's it's no slouch. So and they haven't even had T.Y. Hilton. So the, the Colts definitely impressed me this week after a few weeks with Brian Hoyer where they were just kind of trying to stay alive. They play the Texans here who are reeling on Thursday night, and the Colts actually possess first place in that division. So that's going to be a really a big, exciting, interesting Thursday night game. I can't wait. Then we got the Buffalo Bills are staying put here at number 13. Took care of business against the Dolphins. This team's had just an absolute joke of a schedule to be completely honest but they beat the bad teams so they're gonna most likely make the playoffs as a 10-win team i still don't trust josh allen in any sort of big game situation this defense is a top five to eight unit it's just a really solid team but i don't see the upside there and then number 12 the philadelphia eagles oh man um i i'm prepared to admit that carson wentz has burned me this year when i ranked this team as the number one team heading into the year i had a feeling that that secondary was going to have their struggles the secondary has been much better as of late i even kind of could see this receiving core playing poorly not as poorly as they've played which is a very legitimate excuse but at the end of the day carson wentz is not playing good quarterback he looks like some combination of josh allen and mitchell trubisky like it's just not good he's not processing he's been inaccurate i, I would pl place a lot of blame on the play calling and these receivers as well but carson wentz sure uh, certainly not free of blame now he has shown flash flashes within games uh also just in certain games you know he, he played very well against the bills but man they gotta break it out fast because they're playing the cowboys in a few weeks and they need to win that division if they're gonna make the playoffs because the nfc wild card it ain't happening for them so they gotta really turn this thing around and i for the first time this year am not confident in their ability to do that that was an embarrassing performance on offense 
Number 11, the LA Rams. They're going to move up a spot. They took care of the Bears at home. This defense is definitely emerging as a, a defense that can carry this team. Unfortunately, for their sake, you've got the Seahawks, Vikings, Packers, and 49ers. Two of those teams are in your division, are all ahead of you. <laughs> and they don't seem to show any signs of slowing down. So it's going to be really hard for the Rams to get in. If they were in the AFC, we'd probably be talking about them as a Super Bowl contender. But uh, unfortunately for them, they're, they're in a bad spot as far as where they are in their standings. Uh, even if they were in the NFC East, they'd be in a better situation. Uh, the Houston Texans, they're going to drop down a spot. I, I don't really know what that was. This offense has been able to create no matter what. And Deshaun Watson was not good in this game. He just might have lost himself the MVP as Lamar Jackson lit it up on the other side. Uh, the defense is a major concern, but that really hasn't changed here. We knew this defense wasn't very good. But to see some vulnerabilities here, to see... Uh, Deshaun Watson probably played his worst game of the year. Not probably. He definitely did. He just was not sharp. He was holding on to the ball too long. Couldn't really make anything happen here. So the Texans are going to fall down a tier here. I, I can't really see this team winning the Super Bowl right now. It would take a ridiculous run by uh, Deshaun Watson. But now that they're looking at not getting a first round bye, that means they'd have to do it four straight weeks to win a Super Bowl. I don't know if Watson can do that consistently for four weeks, especially when this defense is looking like one of the worst in the league with all these injuries. Uh, so we do a tier gap up here into the top tier. And this is teams that I can envision winning a Super Bowl. And the number nine team here is gonna be the Dallas Cowboys. You know, I could see it. The defense to me would have to come alive, but this offense is really impressed. Dak continues to impress on a week to week basis. He's just making more big time plays than he's made at any stage in his career now he's getting some outstanding wide receiver play the offensive line dominates so i would say he's got one of the best surrounding cores the play calling's been very good here in dallas they're opening things up they're finally giving their best running back the ball in tony pollard so the offense is exploding they've got a lot of upside on that defense so uh, this team is definitely stock up then number eight, we've got the New England Patriots, who the Cowboys will be playing this week. And this is a big drop for the Patriots. You know, they were kind of hanging out at the top here after their easy schedule to start the year against a bunch of bottom feed teams, uh, looking a little better than we thought. Now that we're seeing them go against actual competition, we're learning that some of the struggles we saw from this offense, even against teams like the Giants and the Redskins, it's a very real deal. They have a lot of issues on offense. The Eagles could not wait to put the ball back in Tom Brady's hands because they couldn't do anything with their offense, but they had felt pretty good about stopping the Patriots all game. If it weren't for one big play by Rex Burkhead and a trick play where Julian Edelman threw a touchdown, the Patriots really couldn't do anything on offense all day. So this defense is really good, but this team is very close to like last year's Bears where they're going to have to win playoff games like 16 to 13. I don't really see it changing. It's not like Mohamed Sanu has come in and been Julio Jones in this offense. He's fine. People keep saying Isaiah Wynn is going to fix all of their offensive line problems. I don't really see that being the case. A guy that has been in the league for 500 days and never played a snap so this team just got issues and i think it was time to lower them when i looked at the other teams that i have ranked above them i'd be picking the other teams against this patriots team uh, so number seven the seattle seahawks they're going to climb up a spot on by this week uh, basically just because i think the patriots offensive struggles is a very real deal right now and you look at some of the other patriots teams of years past that we were kind of hanging on to. Some people don't like that I hang on to the past. The, the fact is the Patriots seem to do this every year, but usually by late October, early November, they figure these things out. It's getting dangerously close to playoff times, and this offense is looking worse than it has all year. Uh, so number six here, the Minnesota Vikings. They're gonna stay put here. Uh, you know, we didn't move the Packers when they lost to the Chargers. We didn't lose the Saints, uh, move the Saints when they lost to the Falcons. You're allowed to have stinkers in the NFL. And the Vikings had theirs this week. The difference is they got Brandon Allen that they were able to shut down at home in the second half. And they were able to leave a lead a pretty big comeback. And that's actually, I think, going to give this team a lot of optimism moving forward. That they kind of stole a game that they didn't play well at all. Uh, so I, I think this is a team that needs to get home field if they're going to win a Super Bowl. But it's very real that they could do that. 
uh, especially if the Packers can't take care of the Niners this week in San Francisco. They're going to be in a decent shape to be a 13-win, you know, two-seed in the NFC. And this team at home is as good as anyone. I don't think it's a team that can go on the road and win multiple playoff games with Cousins and that offensive line uh, being a more defensive-oriented team. But if put them at home and they can absolutely win a Super Bowl. Number five, the Kansas City Chiefs. They're going to stay put here at number five. Uh, they took care of the Chargers. They're still dealing with a ton of injuries, but none of them are season ending. So good to get a win here. Mahomes seems to have his mobility back. And, you know, Tyreek Hill has been out now. So they just got to get healthy come playoff time. Uh, I think that this is the team that nobody in the AFC wants to, to play. You're, if you're the Patriots or the, the Ravens, the Texans, the Colts, whoever it is, you're praying that someone else can take care of them before you have to see the boogeyman. Uh, but right now, I do think there's four other teams better than the Chiefs. One of those being the Baltimore Ravens. Ravens fans have infamously gotten very upset with me after I ranked them seventh last week. This was a statement win for them. It was their most impressive win of the season, in my opinion. This defense is proving that they are a very legit unit, and I didn't know that that was in the cards here. This pass rush is getting the job done. The, the trade for Marcus Peters has been even better than I could have imagined. I saw it as a pretty solid trade to get a good, aggressive number two corner, but he's made a huge difference. He was awesome against DeAndre Hopkins in this game. So what this defense has done has kind of changed my mood on them because I'm not going to lay off my stance that, you know, Lamar has been incredible this year. He's improved his accuracy, all that stuff. He's my second pick for MVP right now behind Russell Wilson, all that. But the two times this year where this defense has faltered, Lamar has straight up played like crap. And he has shown that he can't get into a passing shootout. But I'm not going to back off of that stance. But what has changed here with this Ravens team is the dominance on defense. You know, they've shut out now Russell Wilson, they've shut out Tom Brady, and they've really shut out Deshaun Watson. So that changes the script here because it increases the likelihood that when they get to the playoffs, they're not going to have to get into a shootout. So that's really changing my stance on this Ravens team a little bit. Uh, you could certainly make a case for them as the best team in the NFL right now. Uh, but I am going to stand by the three teams in the other conference here. So the Green Bay Packers at number three, they were on bye. And then the San Francisco 49ers here at number two. A big win for the Niners against a good Cardinals team. Uh, this team was reeling injuries-wise. You didn't have George Kittle to begin with, who is their best player. And then D Ford was out. They had guys getting rotating in and out on defense all game. So uh, a big win. You know, Jimmy's shown some weaknesses as far as throwing some head-scratching interceptions. Uh, but at, at the end of the day, this is an offense that can absolutely move the ball, quite possibly the best play caller in the entire NFL, a defense with probably the best pass rush in the NFL. Richard Sermon's having a great year. So loaded team, very well balanced, maybe not quite as well balanced as the New Orleans Saints. People were not happy that I kept them at number one after last week. Well, they you know, held up this week as the best team for me. I mean, they're so well-rounded. That defense is absolutely stacked, all three levels of the defense. And then obviously on offense, you have one of the three or four best offensive lines in the NFL. You got Michael Thomas, Drew Brees. They could use a second playmaker for sure. And Alvin Kamara hasn't been 100% in my opinion, but Drew Brees probably played his best game of the year, which is scary for the rest of the NFC. Uh, so those are the power rankings this week. I hope you guys enjoyed. I hope you consider hitting that like button. I'm sure everyone will be incredibly civil in the comments section below. I'm excited to see it. So cheers as always, guys. We'll see you for the next one. Peace.